Hi guys, so a while back I got a DM asking me to cover more problematic YouTubers and they mentioned one that I have been wanting to cover for a while because they're just so weird. I know that at this point I'm beating a dead horse but they're still very weird and I want to put in my two little pesitos about this person so let's get into it. Disclaimer as always, I'm just gathering information that I have found online through basic research and putting it all together in a video. Please do not send hate to anyone mentioned in this video, that's not productive at all. If you wish to do something about this user, just don't watch their videos or subscribe to their channel. Thank you. Cookie Lit is a K-pop drama YouTube channel that is best known for their frequent uploads, interesting titles and thumbnails, and for reporting on things going on in the K-pop world very soon after the story is developing. The YouTube channel Cookie Lit was created on January 9th of 2019, and in their About tab on their channel, Cookie Lit claims that they are, quote, a team of K-pop fans who love to talk about K-pop. They post a video just about every day, sometimes multiple times per day, mostly covering drama going on in the K-pop world along with list videos, with the occasional deep dive video on one specific group or topic. They are known for releasing videos soon after rumors and news comes out with great editing, stock footage, and for the person who does their voiceover for their videos. Or should I say people? But we'll get into that in a bit. So what's the cheese man? Well, there's a lot. So I'll start off with something small and then gradually go on to the bigger topics. If you already know about certain parts of their story or drama, I do include chapters for my videos for you to skip around to the parts that you might like. So without further ado, let's get into it. So to start off, something that they're kind of known for that you will notice right off the bat are their thumbnails and their titles. Their thumbnails are kind of the basic T YouTube channel thumbnails like the yellow or red text in all caps, random circlings of things with pictures inside, random big ass arrows, highlights of certain people, editing people to look like they're crying or sad, having X's or duct tape edited over people's mouths. It's weird. <laughs> Their titles are no better. I know that this is YouTube, people over exaggerate and clickbait all the time, but this kind of stuff is next level. They have been called out for this before because what is this? red eyes, crying faces, cult stuff, duct tape. They're continuously feeding into rumors, like including one of their bigger controversies in recent time when they were continuously covering all the Korean celebrities and idols who were being called out for and accused of school bullying. They clickbaited not only in their titles but also their thumbnails, especially and the biggest controversy surrounding them at the time, the member Hyunjin of Stray Kids, clickbaiting and even putting in the title that he was going to be leaving the group and let me just say stays were pissed and rightfully so i think because if some youtube channel were just to suddenly start saying that someone from a group i like was going to leave i would be kind of weirded out i will have a whole section on their weird almost fixation on korean celebrities and korean entertainment tragedies but a lot of this is clickbait. They add a lot of these things into their title, especially if it's trending, and then they go into the topic for a minute or two as their videos are only eight minutes and up to 50 seconds long to get those sweet, sweet mid-roll ads. And a majority of what they cover are what people are saying on these topics, so just gossip. Once there is a rumor that something is happening, like an idol is dating, might leave their group or agency, they immediately make a video about it. And since there isn't much out there other than hearsay, they rely a lot on what netizens and other people have to say. Then as more and more information comes out, they make more and more videos, all being at least eight minutes long to make more and more money on the situation with little to no effort. Since they can just pick a few comments left on Twitter, Neighbor, YouTube, or other online forums and just make a video. I wanted to see what their longest video was and a month or two back they posted a video called How South Korea Uses BTS for Their Military Propaganda. That was the longest video I could find and that video sits at 12 minutes and 26 seconds long. So I don't think that everyone who posts on YouTube has to post 30 plus minute long videos but it's odd how all of their videos are so short and don't have that much information in them. Now you may be like okay what about it? Well, if you don't know, on YouTube, to have ads in the middle of your videos, aka mid-roll ads, 
The video has to be at least 8 minutes long, and you can even place the ad where you want. But if you don't, YouTube then just puts the ad wherever it wants to, where they feel like it's a natural break apparently, but that's just what I've heard. Cookie Lip makes videos that just reach that threshold just to get those mid-roll ads. So I have nothing wrong with YouTubers making money off of their videos, especially when they're putting in a lot of work into their videos. YouTubers are usually just one person or a person who then hires editors and other people to help with their production of their videos. Then there's obviously group channels and all of that, but that doesn't count content farming. So what is content farming? Wikipedia defines it as a content farm or content mill is a company that employs large numbers of freelance writers or uses automated tools to generate a large amount of textual web content, which is specifically designed to satisfy algorithms for maximal retrieval by search engines known as SEO. The best like a ejemplo that I could give of a content farm are other drama or quote unquote tea channels such as Spill or Anna Oop. They try or try to present themselves as a singular person or a small team of people who make videos because it's their passion or covering topics that they enjoy. With these aforementioned channels, the people started off their channel posting videos trying to portray themselves as one singular person or as a small group of people. But then later it was revealed that the channels were either bought out by or were always owned by a big company trying to profit off of whatever genre of YouTube they made their channel surrounding. So these drama channels popped off during the boom of YouTube drama channels and they quickly grew because people really liked their content, their editing, voice, and personalities. And some of these accounts, like Anna Oop, used to interact with the people watching, even doing things like Q A's on Twitter. I bring all of this up because a lot of people, including me, think that cooking Lit is a content form channel. Now, I do not know if they always have been or if they started off as a regular singular person or if they always were and are a content farm from the beginning, pretending just to be one person, then later going on to say that there are multiple people. Like I mentioned, their channel was created on January 9th of 2019, but their first public video that we can see on their channel was posted on March 29th of 2021. And that video was a video remembering Sully, the late singer, actress, and former FX member. The difference in dates aren't that odd, especially since they could have privated their videos once they started to get more attention. That's what I did. Or maybe they didn't like or agree with the videos that they used to post. Maybe they just used their channel as a viewer until 2021. Or maybe it's some other thing. Like, maybe they were trying to hide something. According to some, which I don't know how true this is, but there are quite a few people who back this up, but Cookie Lit apparently used to be run by one person, and that person posted videos every so often. Cookie Lit, as we know it today, posts so often, like I mentioned before, one to multiple times per day. But apparently back then, Cookie Lit posted around once every one to two weeks. They posted long-formed, mainly information-based videos, kind of like how I make now. Remember to take this with a grain of salt, but there are quite a few people who remember it like this. So apparently, allegedly, if we take this as fact that Cookie Lit used to be just one person, then they would plan out, write the script to, record the audio for, and edit their own videos, which is why they only uploaded one video every week or once every two weeks. As someone who does all of that by herself, I know that it takes forever to do, especially since I'm a huevona, so it takes hella long and even more if i get stuck in rabbit holes all of this to say that one person cannot be doing all that they are currently doing on their channel unless they were on some type of stimulant or never got any sleep but they don't claim to be just one person anymore they claim to be a group of quote-unquote friends who make these videos which i highly doubt too Hey, so I'm recording this video as I'm editing it, kind of at the same time. And as I was editing, as you could probably see in the note that I put in, they don't claim this anymore. They don't have this in their bio anymore. They don't say that they're a group of friends making videos anymore. They just say that, oh, this is where you can get all K-pop stuff. But in the old screenshots that I have up until like earlier this year, I think, they refer to themselves as a group of friends just covering K-pop. If you go on to pretty much any other video covering Cookie Lit, you'll see that the people who read their bio mention the fact that they say that they're just a group of friends making K-pop videos. So why would they want to hide that? Why would they want to change that? I think it might be a rebranding thing, but like, why? 
On the old Cookie Lit Instagram at Cookie Lit underscore, there was a post made on the 13th of June, 2021. That was a screenshot of what seems to be a YouTube community tab post that is no longer up on their channel that reads, Hey guys, I have some amazing news for you. Since I'm getting kind of busy, I asked a close friend to jump in and help me with some videos. From now on, you will be hearing two voices on Cookie Lit. I have a lot of new content coming and I could never do it on my own. I hope you'll like the new Cookie Lit. Thank you so much for your support so far. Love you the most. So, as you can see from the language used here, Cookie Lit is talking from a first-person perspective, which is different from the post they make today, where they refer to themselves in the third person. Instead of using I and me pronouns, they are using us and we now. Anyway, after this post, there was another voice, and Cookie Lit was starting to post a lot more, just like they said, but it was a lot more. The same Cookie Lit underscore account posted a screenshot of the Cookie Lit YouTube channel and showed that they had posted a video the day before their screenshot and they posted a video two days before that and then another one just one day before the second video and from now looking at how often they started to post there was a very obvious shift not only with their content and the information being posted but with the voices as well there are or have been many voices used by cookie lit at least four from the videos that i have watched in all of my time knowing about cookie lit in the beginning there was this higher pitched voice. Today, we will investigate the biggest fight in K-pop's history and all the possible reasons behind it. Then later, there is the one that is probably most known now since they're the ones who still voice the channel to this day. To surpass the stage, demonstrating that love knows no boundaries. And then there are some going in and out of the channel. SM Entertainment's new boy group, Rise, hasn't debuted yet. Just six months ago, Cookie Lit made the following post after they started using a new voice seemingly without warning or introduction. It says, Hello, we see your concerns about the, quote, new voice, and we completely understand that you aren't satisfied. Don't worry, it's just temporary. The, <laughs> sorry, why is it in all caps? The voice that you are all used to will be back in about two weeks. Currently, all members of our team are trying to take a vacation one by one, but we wanted to keep posting news and videos as usual. So we use this temporary voice just for the time being. Thank you for understanding and keep enjoying your holidays, guys, with a purple heart. So they were using this voice and then people were upset or just noticed that the voice was new and so they had to address it. So this explanation could be true, that this voice is just someone on the team and that the person who reads the script was on vacation. And I don't doubt that they were taking a break because if I had to voice a K-pop drama YouTube channel video at least once a day, I, I would probably cry. However, when people were exposing the YouTube channel and a oop, people came across that some companies hire voiceover people for short periods of time. Usually from what I could see, two weeks is what most companies and channels look for. And when someone did find this listing, the employer left an example script for the potential employees to see what they would be reading. And it was exactly like every other drama channel script. Suspicious? I think so. So what I'm getting at is that I think, and this is my opinion, that Cookie Lit probably hired a temporary voiceover person. That is why they had that sudden change without any warning or anything. So from my knowledge, this voice hasn't appeared on the channel again. <laughs> isn't that odd? But this isn't concrete, like I said it's just my opinion, so you can take it how you will. Another thing that people think is going on is like what was exposed about the YouTube channels Anna Oop and Spill and the channels that they also owned. If you don't know who Anna Oop or Spill are, I'll give a quick rundown but I do recommend watching videos on them if you're interested in learning about content farm channels. Spill is a YouTube channel who was exposed for being a channel backed and created by a corporation, all while acting like the channel was run by one person or by multiple close people. You know how some YouTubers hire managers, editors, researchers, and things like that? People thought that Spill was just hiring people to do that sort of things for them but that wasn't the case. After some time, Spill introduced two other people who also had channels and they continuously collabed together on things, along with having a collab channel of 
sorts. It was really weird. And all of them having the same kind of character. It was the same art style. It was obviously made by the same person or the same artist. And after a while, YouTubers, notably YouTuber D'Angelo Wallace, exposed the fact that these people weren't just one person or a small group of people. No. It was a corporation who was behind all of these channels, looking to make some money off of the channels. Anyway, they no longer act like they're not a corporation after being exposed. And they tried to say that they never tried to negate the fact or hide the fact that they were a company making videos and posting these videos. However, now looking back, it was very obvious that they are and always were a corporation just making YouTube videos for the money. Anna Oop is similar to Cookie Lit in the sense that they apparently started off the same way, where they posted less frequently and even had social media accounts where they would interact with their viewers. Now they are known for posting videos once or multiple times per day, having multiple channels and covering drama that is still developing. Sound familiar? People speculate and it's pretty much confirmed at this point that Anna Oop started off as a drama channel that was created during the time of the drama channel boom in 2015 to 2018 and then got either bought out by a company or it was always a company who was behind the channel to begin with. There is some evidence to support both claims but it really depends on which of the two you want to believe. This is kind of the same thing with Cookie Lit. I don't know which to believe personally if they were always a company allegedly or if they started off as just one person or a friend group project. But either way, if they were just one person at one point, the likelihood of the original owner still being part of the channel is pretty much slim to none. Another thing that makes this very obvious that this is more than likely a content farm is the fact that they have another YouTube channel that they promote every once in a while where they post K-drama related content. The channel is featured at the very bottom of their channel and they have slash had some posts promoting it on their community tab. Like I mentioned before, some of the YouTube channels that were exposed for being backed by a corporation like Anna Oop and Spill also have multiple channels and they're doing this just to make the most amount of money. They want to go into various different niches, whether it be like Anna Oop, drama, gaming, true crime, and other things, just so that they can make the most amount of money. Anyway, like I was saying, as of writing this, it seems like all of their posts promoting this channel have been deleted. But I'm a chismosa and actually took a screenshot of one of the community tab posts promoting this channel and I'll put it up now. If this is just one of their other channels, then why delete the post? That's weird. If it's an innocent channel, if they're not a content farm, why delete the posts? It's the same editing. It's the same kind of putting in stock footage, highlighting certain things. The thumbnails are pretty much the same. And at one point, they even used the same voiceover in person. To surpass the stage, demonstrating that love knows no boundaries. Relationships can be tricky, especially when they have to thrive in the spotlight. Hu Hye Sun was one of the most famous celebrities during her early times. But now, after some time, they've started to use a different voice. Why? Ni idea. Pero what I do know is that this channel, Miss K Drama, was created exactly eight months after the Cookie Lit channel was made, which honestly makes this even more suspicious. Like, did they see how well the Cookie Lit channel was doing and wanted to get into the K-drama field as well? I don't know. And looking back at the screenshot I took last year, there used to be a business email that you could access visibility to on Cookie Lit's channel just by verifying that you're a human. They probably had this for sponsors and things like that, which by the way, any sponsors who wants to support them my channel, there's an email down below, thank you. But it's not there anymore. For Cookie Lit, not for me, mine is always down in the description if any companies wanna know. And that's suspicious because if there was nothing that you wanted to hide, why get rid of it? They're kind of just getting rid of opportunities for themselves. I remember I saw it, but seemingly don't have a screenshot for it. I think it was because it was something so non-suspicious. It wasn't like cookie lit at insert company name at dot com. It wasn't anything like that. It was something very normal, like cookie lit 101 at gmail.com or something like that. Nothing that really caught my eye. So why delete it? I don't know. It's weird. Y me da mal espina, but anyway. Also about Miss K drama having the same voiceover person as Cookie Lit had at one point. It's weird because that person was added apparently a close friend of the original cookie lit person that voice was added and then not soon afterwards the miss k drama channel was created so take that as you will 
Like I mentioned earlier, I was looking through their old Instagram, and while I was there, I came across their new Instagram, and to my shock, and not in a mean way, but to my shock, they have over 19,000 followers. I know, que famosa, pero I saw some things that were very weird. First, the likes. With an account that big, I would think their likes would be like a couple hundred maybe a thousand every once in a while when it's something nice and fresh and fifi is nice especially if they're announcing something like an interview with someone who was or is in the industry but most of their posts have around 58 likes and I don't mention this to shit on the account, but usually when you see this, this bad of engagement between the post and the following, that usually means that the account is buying followers. I've heard from watching videos on social media things like YouTubers and stuff like that, that if you have less than 10% of your subscribers or followers liking or watching your videos or posts, then your account is alive. But when it's less than that 10%, then your account is dying. I don't know how true that is, but I have seen that like if you apply it to YouTubers who have a quote unquote dying channel, then you can see that that statistic is true. So either this account is six feet under, ya en la tumba, or they are buying followers, which is pretty much the only logical explanation that I can reach. Like how is an account with 19,000 thousand followers only getting less than a hundred likes per post it literally doesn't make any sense unless they were buying followers hey guys so i am editing another note that i want to add in literally right before i started making this video like recording it i already had the script done they apparently went into their Instagram and changed a bunch of things. So I'm adding this note now for the likes and stuff. And then I'll add a note for the following and stuff. But the note for the likes is they disabled the likes on their post. So you can't see the number of likes. Only they can see the number of likes. But they're still at the very low amount of likes. Like one of their posts, I just clicked on a random one. And coincidentally, it was a one about a Korean lawyer talking about such things, which is very interesting. But that post post i counted the amount of likes that post had and you may be like oh that's a little much isn't it no because it was just one page of likes yeah it was seven likes on a 19,000 follower account seven likes so you know you come to your own conclusions on top of that they are only following one account and that is the account singing beetle which seems to be an up-and-coming record label or entertainment company founded by the songwriter michelle cho michelle has written for artists such as baekhyun kai 17 produced 101 and has even been featured on the show queendom puzzle she is a former a and r or artist and repertoire for sm entertainment so she's the person who was responsible for the artistic development of the artist under sm entertainment Entertainment. She has written many hits in the industry and will continue to do so, but for right now, her focus is on this recording company of hers who is currently looking for trainees and also has four public trainees, two of which are from and escape from North Korea, which is apparently something that Michelle would like to break barriers with. It said on the Singing Beatles Instagram bio that they will be debuting in the US soon. Okay, so here's the note on the following. So at the time, I wrote in a note while I was editing this script that they were following an artist, Gubin, who they actually interviewed, I think, on more than one occasion, if not just one occasion. But they started following her account after their interview was posted, like a month or two, maybe even more after her interview was posted. And I just find that weird. And so I just want to look out of pure curiosidad, you know, más como que it just came to me and I wanted to look at their account. Turns out, not only did they got rid of the feature where you can see how many likes they have, they also aren't following anyone anymore. Which is really weird, cause a lot of channels and stuff usually follow like BTS, Blackpink, G Idol, Twice, you know, all of them. But they're not following anybody, like at all. Also, I'm looking over what I put in the script about Gubin, and apparently they had an interview with her four months before I wrote this part and praising her a lot, calling her a super rookie, and they just barely were starting to post the clips onto their Instagram, and that's when they started following her. I have a screenshot for this and everything, and it just happened. And then now when I'm looking at it, it's the 29th of March, they're no longer following anybody not singing beetle who they were following for the majority of the time that i was writing the script and no longer following cuban which is really weird 
Like, what are they trying to wipe? You know what I mean? It's just so weird. I don't, I don't like that. So I don't think that Cookie Lit was bought out by Michelle and Singing Beetle. I know that that is possible, but I just personally don't think that this is the case. Even though I personally don't believe this, there is no denying the fact that Cookie Lit and Singing Beetle are in fact in contact and working with each other. We know this because of Cookie Lit just following Singing Beetle on Instagram and the fact that Cookie Lit made a video on the aforementioned North Korean trainees Hyuk and Sok and also just interviewed the four trainees of SB Boys. Two months ago, Cookie Lit posted the following community tab post. We're happy to announce that the first North Korean K-pop idols agreed to answer your questions. Kenny, Hyuk, and Sok from SB Boys will be sitting down with us to answer what you want to know the most about the group, their stories and dreams. That way, you will get a chance to know the members better before their debut. What's more, we'll reveal new and updated information about the group in the video itself, so please stay tuned for more updates. We'd ask you to keep the questions respectful due to the sensitive nature of Hyuk and Sok's story and for the safety of their families and friends. Thank you. Now, just to clarify, there are currently four members of SB Boys. Sok and Hyuk, who are from North Korea, Kenny, who is Chinese American, and the newest member, Aito, who I think might be Japanese, but I could be wrong, so let me know. But he has the Japanese and South Korean flag in his bio on Instagram. I know that Cookie Lit just recently released the interview with SB Boys, but I haven't had the chance to watch it. So please let me know if there's any information that I have missed or that I will miss in this section. Thank you. In the video, Cookie Lit goes into a bit of their background, not only praising Singing Beetle, but also Michelle Cho. Which, there's nothing wrong with that, but considering their potential ties, I do find it a bit disingenuous. They briefly, and I mean max 25 seconds, go over Kenny, the Chinese American member of the trainee group, and then go straight into Hyuk and Sok's story. Both of their stories are equally sad and heartbreaking, hearing how their family struggled and how the guys escaped to South Korea. I will now go over a bit of their story, how Cookie Lit presented it, but obviously in my own words, just so that you don't have to go and watch Cookie Lit's video. But please do support SB Boys when they debut because they do seem like some really talented and potentially amazing people. So please check them out. I'm not tied to uh, Singing Beetle, by the way. Michelle Cho does not know me. Hyuk's parents divorced when he was young. His father became an alcoholic while his mother escaped to South Korea. His father allegedly bribed the government to not make him work. All the while, Hyuk and his grandmother did what they could to gather money and food. With it being said by Cookie Lit that Hyuk saw his grandmother gathering up grains of rice off the floor at the train just so they could eat something. After a while, Hyuk was convinced to escape North Korea by his estranged mother and asked to go live with her in South Korea. And he had to go through multiple countries to get to his destination of South Korea. Even when he got there, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. It had been years since he last saw his mother, much less live with her. So he was not the most comfortable with the situation and ended up enrolling in a free boarding school that housed other kids who had escaped from North Korea. And he ended up getting little odd jobs here and there just so he wouldn't have to depend on his mother. A year after he left, unfortunately, his father died of a liver disease, likely, and I can only assume, coming from his alcohol consumption. While he was struggling emotionally with the passing of his father, one of his teachers noticed his interest in poetry and suggested that he try writing raps. And after being inspired by the show Show Me the Money, Hyuk started to do so and continued even after he quit school. He then later met Michelle Cho through mutual acquaintances. He later showed her one of his own raps that he wrote. She was impressed and offered to give him free rapping lessons and the rest is history. Sok listened to K-pop sneakily while living in North Korea and liked what he heard. How idols talked about different things than the music that was available in North Korea. That they seemingly were able to express themselves a lot more freely than he had probably ever thought he ever could. 
singing or rapping about whatever they wanted while dancing seems so empowering, which is seemingly why he was such a fan of the genre. Now, the public does not know how Sok got to South Korea and what he had to go through to get there and other things like that. We don't even know how he got into contact with Singing Beetle or Michelle and how he became a trainee. We only know that he got to South Korea when he was around 19 years old. And to be honest, I don't want to know. He has the right to that privacy and his family has the right to that privacy. Cookie Lit does mention this in their video and I do commend them for that. They mention that we do not know if Hyuk and Sok still have family in North Korea and because of that, we don't know how much danger they can be put into if the guys decide to talk more openly about their journeys and their families. I personally wish them all the best and hope that their families are safe as the family members are not bad, the country is. Another thing that I want to mention is that the publishing date for this video is on December 17th of 2023 and I can't find a publishing date for the community tab post about interviewing the guys. Another thing is Singing Beatles YouTube channel actually commented on the video saying, thank you for featuring us with Cookie Lit saying, we'll be happy to support SB boys on their journey. Good luck and we cannot wait for their debut. Again, editing me here, I just want to mention their interview did come out. I just haven't watched it yet. Um, I'll let you guys know in the comments if I end up watching it or in the description. Bye! Another thing that people point to showing that a company is behind the channel or potentially is behind the channel, not only in just Cookie Let's case, but also in general, is the pronunciations of names and words. If a company is turning out videos once or multiple times per day, a lot of people don't think that they would care to learn how to pronounce certain words or names because they are turning out videos in such little time, taking the time to actually get into the genre that you are researching or speaking about would just take too long. Like in the introduction video, the voice for Cookie Lit said Hyuk's name is Hyuk and Sok's name is pretty much Sok. <laughs> I'll play the clip now. The SB Boys members Sock and Hugh. And this isn't to shit on this person. I don't pronounce words right all the time. I probably pronounce Sock's name really bad, but it's like almost next level. I don't know if I personally agree with this backing point. I know a lot of people have used it in cases of other YouTube channels backed by companies, but I have noticed that there are a lot of channels who post very frequently who don't even really bother to learn how to pronounce the names of the people. Like, it's the bare minimum, but you never know with corporations. Moving on from the whole content farm thing, a thing that Cookie Lit does that is just so disingenuous to me is that they report on rumors or opinions going around in the K-pop world, which is fine, but that means that they also report on hate that idols and groups get. They go over the hate and what people are saying and then go, but I just hope they're happy. Here's a little compilation that the YouTube channel Nirvana made for their video on Cookie Lit, which I highly recommend watching after this video or even later. Shout out to Nirvana, love you. It's super disheartening to think about how she might feel having tons of strangers talking about her weight constantly. We hope that she's okay. We just hope that she's happy. She deserves it after all that she went through. I really wish that he didn't see these comments because he's already been through a lot and doesn't need to see these people project their insecurities on him. I'll be linking the video down below. They have an amazing series on problematic K-pop YouTubers, which is a huge inspiration for me personally. Now, why I personally think this is so bad is that the K-pop industry already has horrible ideals about weight, looks, visuals, and a whole bunch of superficial things. Apparently, South Korea Korea as a whole has ideals similar to the one shown in the K-pop world, but obviously in K-pop it's more extreme, just like with many entertainment industries all around the world. So idols already have to deal with the scrutiny of K-pop fans and the general public, but now putting the conversations about idols' bodies on your big platform, because Cookie Lit has over 387,000 subscribers as of writing this, and then at the end just being like, well I hope they're happy, everyone's beautiful, anyway I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Like, imagine seeing a video like that talking about you and your body or a rumor that is going around about you. Someone would have to put me in a hospital because I would become feral. Because 
K-pop idols have been open about the fact that they are watching videos or reading comments or reading tweets or articles about themselves or about just K-pop in general. A good example is Bang Chan from Stray Kids. He's been open about the fact that he watches K-pop Junkie, a K-pop news channel, and some other idols have been very public about just going online and seeing what people have to say about them. For my next video on this channel, I had to go through a Twitter account, not because they were being weird, but because they exposed something. And they mentioned the fact that Wu Young probably saw their Twitter because he mentioned one of her tweets or referred to one of her tweets. I don't really know, but like that is a big thing that idols do is refer to videos, tweets, and other things that fans post. So it wouldn't be completely unfathomable that an idol has seen something that Cookie Lit has posted, especially since they now work with idols and people in the industry. Like I mentioned earlier, they made a video about and now have a video out with SB Boys. They have also worked with Yubin, who is a female solo artist, Shin, the K-pop group, Bebe Yena, now solo artist, former Evo L member, Becca, former after school member, and now they even have a video with a South Korean lawyer. And I think that even more people and companies and groups will work with Cookie Lit because a lot of the times, companies only look at the numbers. This is in no way trying to bash on Cookie Lit because shit, I'd love to work with former or current idols pero también si eso pasaría me surro but that's another thing that i have to personally work on but they're working with idols and people in the industry yet are still doing the same thing of spreading rumors further to their big audiences with nothing but what people just have to say online and then at the end just saying well i hope they're happy and healthy and blah 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 potentially reaching the idols themselves and then just moving on like they didn't do anything because this doesn't affect them. Now imagine this, you're an idol. I know this sounds like one of those weird YouTube shorts or a fanfic, but stay with me. Imagine you're an idol, you just practiced or worked for hours and to unwind you go on YouTube and as you're scrolling you see a video that says that you're concerning fans with your weight gain, the thumbnail is you with your mouth and eyes edited to look sad and when you watch the section talking about you, they read out comments people made on your body showing pictures comparing you to when you debuted or your last comeback, nitpicking your body and then at the end wishing you well and quickly moving on to the next topic. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I would feel like absolute shit. And the thing is, mainly female idols get this type of treatment from the general public, from the industry, from their management, and now from a shitty company-run YouTube channel that is just trying to get money. They get shit on for their appearance, they get videos, articles, everything made on their appearance and weight, and then if slash when they get surgery or lose a bunch of weight, they also get videos made on them showing what they might have gotten done and then people in the comments or people who made the article or video just ended off with saying that they were always beautiful and they, they didn't have to get surgery because everyone's beautiful. So moving on, the last thing that I really want to get into is probably my biggest gripe with Cookie Lit other than the fact that they are probably a content farm. And this is a problem that many people have with Cookie Lit, not only just me, which is the way that Cookie Lit talks about tragedy. Before getting into it fully, I want to give a trigger warning for those who may be sensitive to this topic. I will be talking about death, tragedy, suicide, the loss of life, Moonbin, Pyo Hyerim, and others. If you do not wish to listen to this section, I completely understand. There are always chapters in my videos like I mentioned before, but if you wish to not watch this video up to this point, I completely understand. And I just want it to be known that Cookie Lit has been very insensitive to people's deaths and the tragedies surrounding K-pop and Korea as a whole and has exploited the deaths of multiple people, notably Moonbin. Thank you. The loss of life is something that is just so heartbreaking. It changes the way that we as people who are living continue on. Y teniendo que enterrar a alguien is something that I will never wish on anyone. But it is something that unfortunately has to happen in this life. When talking about tragedy, like someone taking their own life or someone passing away suddenly, people expect for the channel to talk about the person who is no longer here with us in a respectful manner. Obviously, except if the person was a horrible person. That is the absolute bare minimum, to respect the person and their families and to not exploit the situation. And debatably, 
that is not what Cookie Lit did or does. Like I mentioned earlier, their first public video on their channel is a video remembering the life of Sully. And with that video, I do think that it was a very respectful video and showcased who Sully was, what she stood for, and her absolute heart of gold but also covered how hard she struggled and that people were nothing but cruel to her. Even though I do feel like that video was respectful, there is one thing that I don't like about it and that I don't like about how all of Cookie Lit's videos on sensitive topics are. And that is how the video, one, is heavily censored to the point where there were multiple words, not only verbally, but also visually censored, even in some articles. At one point, it was hard to understand what she was saying. Also, I feel the need to point out that the voice reading the script is the original cookie lit voice. Two, the video is seemingly monetized. I got an ad before, during, and after the video. Now I will say that I have heard that if a video is demonetized, YouTube can and will put ads on a video. Just that the creator does not get any of the revenue and only YouTube gets paid. But if I were to guess, since I don't know if this is 100% true, if YouTube does do this, I would go out on a limb and say that Cookie Lit monetized the video, which I don't think that there is something wrong with monetizing a video that you worked really hard on and just because you covered a sensitive topic especially if you're using that monetization money to donate to a cause. But with how often Cookie Lit posts, one video that they don't monetize wouldn't hurt them at all. It also wouldn't hurt them at all if they donated the money to a feminist organization in Korea, an organization that gave away free feminine healthcare products, like something that Silly was really passionate about, or an organization that would help those who are suffering with suicidal ideation or depression. But they don't do this. And lastly, three, the video was just over eight minutes, meaning that it was eligible for mid-roll ads and they did add mid-roll ads, which just kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but it's cookie lit, so of course their videos are made with just enough time to get the most money out of a video. And now I will say that I think that the voice is a K-pop fan, like the original cookie lit voice, just by the way that they talked about Sully and how they were pronouncing things. So I think that her talking points are very sincere and I don't think that this was for show. It's very clearly a topic that the old voice of Cookie Lit cares a lot about and that she cared a lot about Sully. So one person who people very much do not think that Cookie Lit cared that much about or very clearly used them just for views and monetization is Moonbin. Moonbin was a member of Astro and a part of the subunit Moonbin in Sanha and he was a very talented dancer and vocalist who dominated the stage whenever he was on it. He was also a big brother to Moon Sua who is a part of the group Billy and was a son. He unfortunately took his own life on or around April 19th of 2023 only being 25 years old leaving behind his parents and younger sister although it's been almost a year since this has happened so many people are still very much affected especially when it just happened since it was still such a huge shock no one could have imagined that such a horrible thing was going on and just like a lot of other tragedies many channels and news medias picked up on this and reported on it and unfortunately so did cookie lit and while there isn't anything wrong with this there is something wrong with how they did it first cookie lit posted a community tab post informing their subscribers of moonbin's passing and then cookie lit posted at least five videos about moonbin having him in the title and in the thumbnail with all of them having other topics in them, all of them just over eight minutes long, and three of them being back to back, all of them seemingly monetized when I clicked on them. So many people, including myself, found this very disrespectful. This seemed like a very clear example of Cookie Lit exploiting the situation, and many people made posts, comments, and videos on Cookie Lit. Not only that, but the titles and subjects of the videos are just so weird to include while talking about an idol taking his own life. And so you understand me better, I will read them out loud and in order. Starting off with Astro's Moonbin left us, Viction disbandment situation, DKZ's Kyungyun suffering from anxiety. Next is all celebrity reactions to the tragic news about Astro's Moonbin. Then Cha Unwoo's heartbreaking message, she won's transphobic post, and Mix Solyun breaks down crying. Then Astro's Moonbin from 1 to 25 years old, and there was one before this 1 to 25 
25 years old but i have saved it since it is the most disgusting in my opinion and that is boys planets zhang hao's sexuality controversy moonbin's funeral 17's set a new record all of these videos that cover Moonbin have him in the title for clicks and they do not care about his fans and most importantly about him and his family. If they did, they would have not covered his passing in this way because it's disgusting. Like I mentioned earlier, the people around him, his family, his friends, his sister, his members, his fans could come across these videos wanting to see what they say about him just for the subject to change to something so stupid like questioning someone's sexuality which is none of our business and it is so disrespectful to Moonbin's family and loved ones. Why would you cover his funeral while also covering someone's sexuality and people's opinions on it? While this was going on, I thought that I was just tweaking about the whole situation because I'm really sensitive about people who have passed, especially those who are clearly suffering. I don't know if it's because of my own attempts in the past, my own personal feelings about death, or because I come from and was raised in a culture that respects and honors those who have passed but the whole situation was giving me malespina and as it turns out i wasn't the only one and it hasn't been the first time that this has happened many other youtubers made videos on cookie lit when this was going on like how i mentioned earlier nirvana but others as well pointing out how cookie lit thrives off of covering tragic topics when you go onto their channel, their featured video on their channel, which you have to input yourself when you add that feature, so they chose to promote this video to those who click on their channel, is about an accident that happened during a four minute concert in 2014 that left 10 people injured and unfortunately took the lives of 16 people. The thumbnail is just weird. It's Hyuna crying, which I don't think it, that it's from this event, which even if it was, why would you include a picture of her crying over 16 people losing their lives while she was singing and dancing on stage along with her four other members? I don't know, but anyway, there's four minute in the lower right corner, an ambulance with a stretcher in the upper right corner, and then on the left there is what I'm assuming is the location of the accident, with under it saying in bold letters, 16 lives lost, with an arrow pointing to the stretcher. Which I will say, making thumbnails for sensitive topics can be difficult, but there is a way to do it respectfully, and this is not it. This is not anywhere close to respectful. And not only that video, because they also added the feature where you can look at their most popular videos right under that on their homepage, including videos on and having in the thumbnail or title, Daesung's car accident where a motorcyclist passed away, Gu Hara's death, and the infamous video or live where she was clearly having a mental breakdown, Sully's last Instagram live, severe weight loss, Chris Wu, Sassings, which I know I cover and I will come back to this in a second, talking about and why Irene might be uncomfortable with slash around men and a whole lot more. And I just want to say about the pictures of Sully and Guhara, why include that if they're very clearly going through something and then after that they took their own lives? Not directly after but afterwards. And Cookie Lit knows this and is why they're using it. Why do that? Why put someone at their lowest images of people at their lowest in your thumbnails. That's just disgusting. Cookie Lit is promoting these videos. They're the ones who have the most views and they're all monetized since they censor the hell out of it and don't go into graphic details. So why would they stop making these types of videos? There is an issue that I think a lot of fans have, but this is even worse when it's a company and it's that they don't see these people as that, as people. Their stories, careers, lives, and even deaths are only there for them to make videos and make money off of. And obviously if you're a fan, it's just for you to talk about, a point for you to make against someone who doesn't like your favorite group or someone who's a fan of a group that you don't like. But Cookie Lit is using this for money. They're growing their channel to make even more money. I think that this has happened to a lot of people in channels, that they are potentially people who start off with good intentions and then once it becomes a way for them to make money and a large amount of it, they get blinded by it and start to let go of their own morals because we all need to survive, right? We all want attention and praise to a certain extent. So once someone has it, they want to keep it. 
Now I want to make it abundantly clear that there are multiple ways to cover certain stories and tragedies with grace and with the victims and their loved ones in mind and to honor their memory or to cover something that has happened and explain how and why it might have happened and potentially how it could have been prevented. I think that there are many channels who cover true crime, death, and sensitive topics in a very respectful way that lets you know that they care about the people who were involved and not just the views, channel growth, and the money. Cookie Lit is not that though. They cover a subject, event, or person's life in a very superficial way, in a way where they don't have to do much research, they don't have to record much audio or edit much because their videos just have to be over 8 minutes. Un milagro si es más de 10 minutos. And I think that it's super disrespectful. Especially Especially when they add updates to a person's passing, their funeral, or something traumatic that has happened while they're talking about a dumb rumor about an idol's weight or about their sexuality or some other dumb thing like that. Circling back to Cookie Lit covering tragic topics, they also cover these people's attempts on taking their own lives, unfortunately successful or not, and other tragedies while, like I mentioned earlier, also talking about random ass drama or rumors going on. I had already mentioned this when speaking on Moonbin and their coverage on him, but that's not the only one that this has happened to. On a video called TW, Big Bang's Top admits he attempted suicide with suicide being censored, 17's Mingyu in two controversies, Itzy. Uploaded on March 13th of 2022, on this monetized video, Cookie Lit opens with a preview of what they are going to go over in this video, and then immediately goes into talking about that rumor that was going around at the time that maybe Jay from an hyphen and Yuna from Itzy were dating. Then they went into Unhyuk of Super Junior saying that he doesn't like that all SM artists has to participate in the Kwangya concept. Then talking about Jessica, the ex Girls Generation member, going on to a Chinese re debut survival show. Then going into Mingyu's controversies, which one was from a YouTuber Sojang, which Come on, girl. You know So Jung, right? The YouTuber that was sued by One Young of Ive and is now being sued by KQ and or 80s? The one who made up rumors out of nothing just to try and tarnish an idol's career and reputation? Yeah, her. People have known that she's problematic since like 2021, if not sooner. So why include them, bruh? Like, and on top of that, the footage that So Jung was using that Cookie Lit put in their video was originally from assessing girl now like i mentioned earlier they go basically just surface level with every topic then share their quote-unquote personal opinion but never say hey this is the source and this is who was reporting on it this is not normal behavior and take all of this with a spoonful of salt but no they just say a sentence or two and then immediately move on to top from big bang talking about his mental health and him talking in an interview about his suicide attempt no trigger warning other than the one in the title no nothing just let's talk about this guy talking about rumors that almost drove him to try to take his own life and let's censor the shit out of it so we can get ads yay and then end the video by saying that when looking at what top said and then looking at what's happening with mingyu we should take some notes or something like that <laughs> like bitch you should take some notes reporting on rumors and not directly condemning them and they not only did this with top they did this with pyo yedim who was a youtuber and a huge advocate for school bully victims. She set up petitions to extend or outright eliminate the statue of limitations for people who commit school bullying, amongst a whole lot of other things. She did this because she was bullied for over 12 years, all throughout elementary, middle, and high school, all by the same four people. And she found the courage to share her story after watching the drama The Glory, which is about a victim of school bullying who went on to get revenge on those who bullied her in the past and who went on to live successful lives while she had to deal with the fallout of the bullying and the trauma that they caused her. I haven't finished the drama, but highly recommend it. Pyo Yerim owned a beauty shop and ran it by herself, all the while running a YouTube channel. But unfortunately, she did end up successfully taking her own life on October 10th, 2023. She has been suffering since she was in elementary school, and I can't imagine what she has gone through and i just want to say that she is super brave for coming forward and talking about what she went through and also trying to change the law so that they don't protect the people who are bullying but instead protect those who are bullied so how did cookie lit cover this tragedy like they always do by in the title saying 
TW. Hyo Yerim takes her own life. Jinny speaks on leaving Enmix. Rise Sungan dating rumors. They move directly from talking about Jinny, which she doesn't even talk about leaving Enmix, but of course they're stretching the truth for clicks, and then directly moving on to talking about Hyo Yerim. Again, no trigger warnings, no nothing. And then in this video, like they did with the one on top, they just said, I hope she's resting well. Anyway, bye guys, see you later. Like, Pyo Yerim had a life and impacted many people and will continue to impact many people, especially to those in South Korea who had had to experience school bullying for years. And I hope that there is a law passed in her honor and that she isn't remembered as someone who just took their own life or as someone who was mentioned briefly on a YouTube video. She is so much more than that. Cookie Lit has done this to T.O.P. or Top, Moonbin, Pyo Yerim, and more, and they will more than likely continue doing this since most, if not all, companies and corporations do not have hearts and do not care about these people. Before moving on to my own thoughts, opinions, and then the outro, I do want to say something if the people behind Cookie Lit are watching. I want to say that you guys can change for the better and create better, more informative content with more compassion. While I think that would be hard for a company to have a heart, I think that it can be done. Can it be done by y'all is yet to be seen, but coming from someone who used to watch your videos around a year or two ago pretty religiously, I hate the way your content has changed for the worse. It's very clear that your motives are only surrounding money, not anything else. Whether it be from the AdSense or if the rumors are true that you get some under the table money from companies to not talk bad about them, the heart that was once there behind Cookie Lit is dead and gone. I hope that you guys can change for the better, but that hope is just around the same amount of hope that I have that Jay Park or Jesse will change for the better, which is pretty much nothing. So, suck nargas, come verga, bye. I hate you. If the original creator of Cookie Lit ever comes to see this video, or anything that covers them, over anything else, I hope that you're okay. I don't know if you felt the need to sell your channel for a reason, that being for financial reasons or from any hate that you were getting. I hope that you're okay, and if you're still a K-pop fan, I hope that you're still enjoying the music and that groups or soloists that you like are still active. I really hope that that isn't the case. I hope that you didn't have to sell your channel because you were in dire need of money, or if you just really couldn't handle the hate anymore. I don't know if you ever got hate, but I hope that that isn't the case but if you're still with the company just now behind the scenes well now i don't really wish you that well queen no te voy a mentir, but if this is the case you sold your hard work to or for a company that is making this space very weird and that may come back to bite you in the ass so keep your eyes peeled I really hope that this isn't the case and that I hope you're well. In the best scenario ever, you just sold your channel because you didn't want it anymore. And I hope that that's the case, but you never know. Now, moving on from the topic a bit, I like I just said, I was going to move on to my own thoughts and opinions and then the outro, but I do want to talk about the whole sussing thing that I mentioned before. Um, I don't want to move directly to the outro after all of that, but I do want to address the whole sussing thing before I move on to the outro. I know that if I go into Cookie Lit about them covering sussings, it'll be very hypocritical of me, and that's just not who I am or who I want to be. So I obviously don't think that there is something wrong with covering or talking about sussings, since that is something I do and will continue to do. I actually think that it's pretty productive to talk about them because it gets more attention onto them so that people look out for them and the companies are more aware of them even though companies usually don't do anything to them but fans know that these people can be dangerous or can do anything to try to get to their bias or idols. With that being said though, I don't think that the way Cookie Lit covers sessings is necessarily wrong. Their videos just aren't my favorite. I'd rather watch a ploopy video on a group incident or sussing if that's what I'm looking for. I love ploopy. My thing with their videos, which is a problem I have with all of their videos, is how badly researched they are. Like I mentioned, it's very superficial research. They don't get into it much and that's true for the sussing videos too. They also censor the shit out of that too. But other than that, I don't really have a problem with their sussing videos. It's mainly their videos that cover tragedies that I have a 
big issue with but i did want to mention this and bring this up because i was mentioning their most popular videos and i didn't want there to be any confusion and for it to seem like i have a problem with sussing videos or like I'm the only one who can make sussing videos because that's not the case. So I just wanted to mention that so that we're all on the same page. So that was the video. I'm so sorry. It's so long. I talk for hours and I get stuck in rabbit holes. So this video turned out a lot longer than I wanted it to be. I originally wanted it to be 30 minutes. But what can I say? I'm a talker. I wanted to add my thoughts at the end, but I pretty much sprinkled in my thoughts throughout the whole thing. So I don't really think there's a need for that. But I did think that it was kind of funny how I'm planning on releasing videos now at once a week. I've already written out scripts for a lot of videos. Well, two are completely done, but I'm starting two other ones just because it's like a two-parter thing. But I thought it was kind of funny how I saw a lot of similarities between the original cookie lit or what they say the original cookie lit is and like me where it's like more long form information based videos and then they suddenly went from like that and posting like once or twice a week to posting really frequently and I post like once every two months so I just wanted to let y'all know I'm not going to be bought out by a company if I'm posting more often it's just because I have more time to and I have like las ganas para hacer más videos no es como que un compañía me it's not that a company bought me out or anything like that it's just yo no soy huevona o algo no sé but I, I know I promised that last time and then I didn't do it and I didn't post for like a month but that was because something like a lot of stuff happened in that time so I just want to say thank you for being patient with me I'm recording this on hopefully the day that I post this it's Easter so happy trans visibility day happy easter for those who celebrate and happy ramadan to those who celebrate um if you don't celebrate anything slay i hope you have a good day i hope all of y'all have a good day that's all i want to say because i'm tired of talking also i almost forgot since half or a majority of this video was talking about mental health half or a majority or all of the revenue made from this video will be going to different mental health organizations and in a month i'll post where i donated everything to since i'm probably not going to get paid for the month of april on youtube so i just want to put that out there that's pretty much it love you guys bye adios mm -hmm.